Hey guys, uh, this is going to be the first video in hopefully now getting into exploitation stuff. Um, what you see on the screen here is actually the test platform called Barker from a platform called bugbountyhunter.com. Uh, it's ran by Zishano, created by Zishano. He's a super cool guy and I would really recommend going to check it out. It does cost money and I get none of it, no affiliate crap or being paid to push it or anything it's just a very good program made by a very very well known and very good hacker that's meant to get you ready and get you prepared for live bug hunting there's like 170 vulnerabilities to find you rank up as you rank up you get rewards and you there's a discord channel and all this stuff so so check it out i'll put the link in the description again and huge thanks to zishano for letting me use it to show some stuff um they're hopefully gonna be in little chunks so we can uh, like take little bite-sized chunks out of this and I'm gonna try to show as little vulnerabilities as possible and maybe like lead you right up to it and not show it to you it as best I can or like I said, a few may show up that, that may end up being given away. Um, and I'll probably put some kind of like spoiler alert on that or something just so if you are a part of the program, you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. But this one is gonna be about um, just a super basic intro if you're hunting for like broken access control eye doors manually, right? It almost always has to be done manually. There's there's some stuff that could maybe sort of be automated, but really not so much. It's more of an automated thing. Um, and one of the things I'm going to talk about today is one way to test if there's a platform like Barker where you can create a profile and do things as a profile. When you have user interaction and user data and all this kind of stuff, it's a super, super good sign to make multiple test accounts or get your hands on multiple test accounts and and compare them. What one can do, what the other can't do, especially if there's different levels, um, like, you know, admin, member, read-only, whatever it may be, uh, testing those levels against each other or even, again, if there's just all, like, one role just of, like, members, getting two members and testing, you know, can... When one member updates his profile, how does it work? And is it possible for another member to actually update that person's profile or read that person's secrets or do, you know, do something they shouldn't be uh, as like their own separate user? So for this, what we're gonna do just today, we're gonna start something really simple. Um, so again, one of the problems is that, I, that I've heard some people run into is, you know, having to have multiple browsers or multiple instances open to have multiple accounts. So there is a browser extension for Firefox and it comes with a burp extension and that extension is called PwnFox. So you download both the Firefox extension and the browser extension and I'll put the link in the description uh, to the GitHub repo to get those and the instructions, but it's super simple. The Firefox extension you can get right from the extension shop and the burp extension you can just download the jar file right from the releases and just throw it into extender and you're ready to go. Um, but one of the things that it can do, it can do a lot of different things, and we may talk about some of those later. Like I said, you can see it can remove security headers for you to text, test injections and, and that kind of thing. Um, what we care about here is the containers. If you'll see here, this is just uh, was just the bug bounty hunter thing like I was saying, so I remembered to plug it. Um, but if you can see here, this tab has a little blue line above it, but this one has a little orange one. Um, so what that does is they're actually containerized instances of Firefox, meaning that whatever session cookies I would make in the orange one, for instance, won't be in the blue one. So I can have just one instance of Firefox up and actually test a bunch of different accounts just with one instance without having like an incognito browser and a regular browser or Chrome and Firefox trying to run separate accounts and minimizing one and opening up the other. You can just, you can have up to this many different containers and each container is basically like its own session, its own like instance of Firefox, even though they're all in the same tabs. So it makes it really easy to compare and contrast um, all that sort of stuff when you're testing two different accounts against each other. And I'll show you how that works here in a second. So like I said, right now I'm in an orange tab. It doesn't really matter because I'll probably swap over to other ones. But if we click here on join and we just want to register. So let's make our email address test one at test.com we'll make a really strong password that 
spoiler is just test test. We'll give myself a really strong pin of something crazy. Username can also be test one for now. Uh, appearance, display name can be test one, description can be test one. Again, this is all probably interesting stuff to look at that we'll look at in other videos, but for now, sticking to access control. If we register here, obviously probably don't save it. And now we're logged in, right? So now for orange, we are logged in in this orange one as test one, right? And I can see my profile, my dogs. So see here, profile test one. Um, if I go here and open a new container and I copy in my instance of Barker here, control, control, and I copy it in, when I load my new one now in green, Pone Fox Green, our new session, I get the register screen again because my, my session cookies didn't come over, right? Another cool thing about Firefox or Pone Fox that we can see is if you go into HTTP history, if you see all this green traffic versus all this red or orange, however you want to see it, traffic, you notice that it's color coded. So I so if I pull eight different containers of eight different colors up and then I want to go look in HTTP history and see what did what, the burp side of PwnFox, the reason why you want to download the burp extension to go with PwnFox is because it color codes it for you. So blue was, you know, whatever, but the red container was, you know, me doing my thing on red. And then now when I made the new green one, you see here, here's my post request right here on red. So I registered and I had on my stuff, test1.com, my secret, super secret password of test test it, you know, highly recommend. And here's my register, but then over here, here's my original Git to just get the base social uh, barker. And you'll see, it, it resets my cookies, it resets me a new session cookie, but over here, when I reloaded after registering, I had a session cookie, I already had one. So if I just opened a new tab, like just on a basic browser without PwnFox, all my authentication would come with, like that, that's how the normal browser works. So you'd have to open, like use Firefox for one account and Chrome for another, not, but with this, everything's color coded, I can have multiple accounts open now, I can go here, and what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna repeat the process, right? But instead, I'm going to be test two for green. I bet you can't guess what the password's going to be. Something super secret, obviously. But if you have test two here and appearance, and for display name, we'll put in test two. Premium doesn't matter right now for this video. And we register. And all of a sudden now, this one, I'm still clicking around. Everything still works as test one in the orange tab, right? But when I'm in green, I'm test two. And I go to my profile and my profile says test two, right? So, so now I can test both of these accounts side by side. Again, they're, they're the same role, they're the same user. So it gets even more fun when there's like an admin and a regular user and, and stuff like that. But for now, I have two users that are doing something. So an example of maybe what you'd want to look at for this is right in front of our face here, right? So here we go. I can edit a profile. I'm going to edit my profile, right? So I'll click edit and I can change my description to be holy moly a description. And I can click update. And now my description says holy moly a description. Cool. So if I go look back at what happens, here we go. I look at green stuff. And again, I, I don't, I have a bunch of like extra stuff in there cause I don't have scope set. Um, but if I go find my, my update request here, you'll notice I have profile update 53, right? And I had, and it's a patch request and there's a token with it. And then it takes my profile name, and my profile description. And I updated it to holy moly description and I got redirected back and it was, and it was all good. And then it ended up working, right? And there it is. So if I go to Barker and now let's go over here and put intercept on, I go to Bar, oh, maybe not yet. Let's turn intercept off for now. So if I go to Barker on my orange tab on test one and I do update, I edit profile and I say secret description 
and I update my profile, same thing updates. But now if I go look here in my HTTP history, it's red traffic. Oh, but look at that. Now the update request actually said 52, where this one said 53. Well, that's interesting. So if I'm red here, this is the red tab. If I send this to repeater now, what if I, tr and what I just used here, this was the request that I used to change test one's description to say secret description, right? But when I did it with test two, it was 53. So what happens if I just change that to 53, right? Now this, like I said, this is where we're gonna stop because again, you, you know, wink, you never know what would happen, but this would basically be one way to test to see, okay, like I was able to edit my own description out of the red tab, right? So this session cookie, just doing, you know, a quick glance, this session cookie is probably gonna be what authenticates my request to the API or to the back end or whatever, right? When I'm making my update request, but with this same session cookie, from this orange tab here, was I able to update this profile, right? So I'm able to go through now in my HTTP history and pull out red versus blue and look and say, okay, so those two things were different, right? And as you go along, like maybe if I go and, you know, go here and I go to my dogs and I add a dog, maybe there's like other IDs and other, you know, GU IDs and whatever they may be, and it's one way to keep two accounts separate. Everything's color coded. You can compare and contrast. Like I said, for all we know, this request may work. We're gonna stop here, but this, what I would do is I would just click send and I would see, hey, now that I used red's token or orange's token, but I tried to swap my ID to 53, which if we look back in the proxy was actually green's profile ID in the update functionality. What, would I be actually able to change green's description using red's authentication? And that's one way to test broken access control, authentication issues, and that kind of things that are basically all, you know, very high rated vulnerabilities on a lot of platforms in the wild. Um, I'm, there's gonna be a part two of this. I just wanna keep it short and sweet now that we're getting into exploitation stuff to not turn it into hour long videos of ranting and raving. Um, stay tuned for part two. Uh, but for now, I hope you guys learned something. Any questions, uh, my Twitter's in the description or leave a comment. Um, other than that, see you guys later. Peace.